We're here to answer your game, game, your game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Social media works too. We are everywhere at Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Well, the best way is for questions to come through the website. We're not going to say no to a question asked anywhere online or I guess in person either. It's the last Wednesday in May, and that means it's time for another AMA. Tonight, we are taking questions from our chat room, The Lobby. In addition, we invite you to call into the show and leave a voicemail through Skype, and we'll play it here live and answer your question right away. To do that, just Skype call to Sean at TabletopBellhop.com. So, uh, we're going to start off. We had a uh, question posted on the blog by Jason. Uh Okay. My question regards uh, the attack modifier deck for Gloomhaven. Is the attack modifier deck always 20 cards? Example, a road card action tells me to add minus one times three to my attack modifier deck for the start of the scenario. Do I just add three minus one attack modifier cards? Or do I add three minus one modifier cards and subtract three so the deck is always equal to 20? All right, I think someone here is a D&D player, that's my guess, or someone who uses it, plays D20, F20 games, because I think they're thinking that modifier deck is like the equivalent of a 20-sided die. It is not. The attack modifier deck starts at 20 cards, but can be any size. Uh, so if you are adding three minus one cards to your modifier deck, you're, and you have the initial deck right from the start of the game, you're going to have a 23 deck card. Three, 23 card deck. Through the game, as soon as you get which as soon as, you up, or as soon as you complete enough in-game things, you're going to click off a perk, you're going to add and remove cards from that deck. Very quickly, very early in the game, that deck is not going to be 20 cards. Now, through playing the game quite a bit, there were some people in a group that got that deck really thin, where they almost knew what was going to come up every time, whereas my first Craigheart character, I think my deck was up to like 32 cards. I just kept adding and adding and adding and adding stuff to it. So that is a big part of the game. Don't try to think of it as a replacement for a two-hit deck or a two-hit roll in a standard RPG. It is a, a different beast. So just to reiterate, no, your Gloomhaven deck is not stuck at 20 cards. When you add cards, you add them in, and when you remove them, you take them out, and whatever size it ends up is the size it is. All right, well, there we go. There's another little tidbit for all of our Gloomhaven fans out there. Yeah, we got every now and then. Like, we put out that FAQ. So that's, that's our most popular YouTube video is, is Sean and I going through the Board Game Geek uh, FAQ for Gloomhaven, which is the official FAQ, Isaac and uh, whatever, uh, authorized, I guess, endorsed, Isaac endorsed FAQ. Um, I have no idea how up to date it is now. Uh, it should be pretty close. Like I, I'm sure there are probably a couple new things that have come up since the original game came out, but we went through that and that is currently our most popular video on YouTube. Yep. So you can find that over on our YouTube channel. But since putting that out, it seems that enough people seem to think we're Gloomhaven experts. So <laughs> fair enough. Uh, we have played a lot of sessions and we continue to make mistakes. So it's a what 45 page rule book with lots of little idiosyncrasies and little rules. And it's really easy to make a mistake. So one thing is yep. don't feel bad if you're like Jason and you mess something like that up and like especially if you're coming from another game right if you played descent before you played imperial assault or you played a role-playing game you're going to come in with some preconceived notions about what to expect from gloomhaven and realize that this is a different beast than all of those and uh one thing you know we, we bring it up and we actually harp on it quite a bit in the video but uh grammatically some of the cards yes. are problematic so it's not unusual to you know make mistakes based simply on your interpretation of the writing on the card uh, because it's not always as clear as I feel it should be. Oh, definitely. The, where the line breaks are matter if something's bold or not matters. And even worse, nowhere is that explained. Nowhere is the grammar explained in the rule book. You're just, it's supposed to, I, I think Isaac must have thought it was implied by looking at it. Yeah. But that is something that's in that FAQ. It's in our video where we talk about if it's bold, it means this. If it's on a separate line, it means this. If there's a line break, it means this. Basically, if it's a line break, it's a separate action. Where if there's no line break, then the, the line applies to whatever's above it. And same thing with bold. Bold are actions, whereas not bold are modifiers for that action, if I remember correctly. Yep. No, it's uh, it, it's it's crazy. And, and I think it's one of those things that they got so used to their own cards during play sessions. Yeah. And they probably taught it during play sessions 
but it was so second nature to them teaching it even during a play session they just didn't make it into the rule book that's uh, you know one of those things that happened all right, All not right. too People many in questions the in the room. chat room yet. Quiet in there. I know we we may hopefully we didn't lose too many people when we were uh, struggling yeah. to, at the start. So now we're gonna do a quick question. What happened with the start of the show? Why we were late this morning? Kind of tossed in the beginning. Skype did update uh, two days ago, and since then is doing nasty things with my video based on what it thinks our internet bandwidth is. Is probably about the best I can explain it. So I do apologize for stuff shrinking and growing. So it turns out that if we were using the other OBS, which we may start doing, um, there is yeah, a solution. They do. Skype, Skype has posted a solution on the Microsoft.com for the other OBS software. Okay. Not Streamlabs. Uh, and so I may, I mean, for, for your stuff, I think you should probably keep using Streamlabs. Uh, but I may on my end, take our show and move us over to the other OBS uh, as there is a solution. Um, there is a solution built into that software that right. Microsoft. Uh, so, and I mean, we may still move away from Skype because the problem is even if it doesn't resize, the quality will change still. Yes. Um, and, and that's part of that. I mean, the reason we are, re we are resizing is because of uh, bandwidth shaping by Microsoft. Uh, right. But, uh, again, I, there is a solution in the in the other software to maintain the size, no matter what. Uh, yeah, that see, doesn't that's, that's and, and exactly I and I just went and I just dug through uh, Streamlabs OBS and that problem isn't there, uh, or that solution isn't there. That one right. checkbox that I want to be able to hit. So yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. Now there was something else. Someone just announced that OBS is now doing the Streamlabs used to do, and I can't. I think it's go live direct from OBS now or something. Oh, the, uh, my Reddit was filled with OBS got way better like uh, yesterday, last night and today. So but, you know, like I, there might be other reasons. Yeah, to swap I've, back. I've been I've been using OBS for my own uh, purposes. Well, when I'm stream, if, if I stream, which doesn't happen much, uh, much, but yeah. if I stream, it's OBS. But also, I've been using it as a virtual camera for um, conf conference calls. So I've already got it set up. I just need to move our scenes over to it, and that should be there. Uh, all right, so we've had our first question in the chat room. Yep. So uh, Red Meeple Ryan asks, have you ever received a game recommendation only to learn that the person suggesting the game is the designer or someone who works for the publisher? Uh, I'm not going to be able to think of specific examples, plus I'm not sure if I should highlight specific examples and think of them, but I have definitely, it has happened. Um, I have gotten game recommendations. I have had... The, the worst is when you were talking, I, I see this on social media, where you are talking about a certain style of game. And oh, the, the slightly annoying is you're talking about a certain style of game, and then person jumps in to say, hey, have you tried this? And to be honest, I really don't mind as long as they're upfront about it. Like, please tell me, I might enjoy your game. If I'm talking about abstract games and Mark Spector jumps in and says, hey, you should check out Garinto, that's an abstract game we publish, that's fine. It's when they come in and they do the passive aggressive thing and like, hey, have you ever heard of this game called Garento? It's supposed to be really good. That's when I actually get rather annoyed and upset. Um, I've met people in our gaming community and gaming groups that have been like that. And I just I hate that schmarmy, swarmy. I don't know, like that, that, that attitude of, oh, check out this thing. That's really cool that this awesome guy made. Yeah, it's really neat. And it's actually there's just I don't know, it feels horrible to me yeah. in a way that, and will actually turn me off on the yeah. person's game now this actually goes to something that uh, you and i talked about a little bit this week and there's been a, a, a whole bunch of buzz about on twitter and that is game reviews and how you determine uh or how you state things about your game reviews because yeah. in this day and age uh in in the world of the pandemic uh it's it's difficult as we've talked about numerous times on the show it's difficult to properly review a game if you don't have four people around it's really hard to give an opinion on a four-player game or how a game plays at four players so a lot of people are turning to virtual tabletops or other digital solutions for game reviews and my stance is if you want to state at the top of your review hey i played this on virtual tabletop and this is my thoughts on the game great because I now know everything I read from that point on 
is framed in that, okay, Correct. you played the digital version. And, mm -hmm. and that goes exactly the same for recommendations. Hey, I'm the publisher of Garinto. Yeah. You were talking about these games. This game is just like that. Maybe you want to give it exactly. a try. Framing is everything. And you need that information up front. Yeah, I totally agree. It, it's, and I don't mind it. Like, like feel free. The, the, the one I, other one I'd mind is when the person interjects their game into every conversation. So I am like, I am looking to play a new 4X game. I want to make sure it's got a really strong exterminate because me and my friends like player versus player con content. And I'm going to pick on Mark Spector here because I love Mark Spector and I love Garinto. So you know that he's not <laughs> one of the people who did it. All right. So we're doing this backwards. So instead of instead of blaming a specific company, I'm going to, I'm going to mock blame greater than games because they have not done this. So and, and, and I've had a really good relationship with Mark so far. No, uh, we're not promoted in any way. I reviewed one of his games. That's it. Just we had a really good relationship during that review. But anyway, I'm like, I need a 4X game. Lots of conflict because that's me and my players head to head. We love going at it. And you're like, oh, have you checked out Rinto, an abstract strategy game about the way of the path? A, a very zen game about trying to get your spiritual center. And I'm like, I just said I want a 4X. Like... That or or even me. worse, or even worse, they take they take Garinto, which is a Zen peaceful path making game, and try to yes. talk up. Well, you know, you know, if you take the if you take this tile, you're totally messing over that other player. So you can really go head to head by which tiles you take. No, no, you can't. Yeah. Stop trying to reframe your game. It doesn't work yes. that way. So that that's when it bothers me. I really don't mind if a publisher art had, if we had an artist right in earlier today. If a game artist, any of them want to promote their game, tell me your ties to it, please. And second, be honest about it. Like, like don't interject your game in every conversation about games that you're trying to fit yours into the niche and give a give an honest opinion. Like I have to assume most publishers like the games they're publishing. But yeah, let us know. Disclosure, right? It's, it's the same thing that goes for the reviews. Frame it properly. Let people know right from the start. Yeah, I, I I had someone come back to me on, on and 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 engage me about my opinion on the uh, the review topic the other day, and I said, look, if you want to review a game by picking up the box and looking at the back of it and giving me a review, go ahead, publish it. Just tell, tell me up front yep. so that I know I can ignore everything you say from that point yes. on. I but go ahead, publish the review. That's fine. It's a legitimate review based on a legitimate you know scenario. Uh, it doesn't tell me anything about the game, but what you have uh, you know you followed all the rules and go ahead publish if you want uh all right i do apologize for any typing sound but our, our <laughs> chat room we got enough people here but we had a rough start today so we lost some people earlier on and i don't blame them we took us over half an hour to get going tonight and that's i admit not very professional i don't think i blame us for it but it's tech issues we probably should have went live a little earlier to work these bugs out who knows whatever could have done it better we lost some people uh, we got another question from uh, Ryan and uh, questions on game tiebreakers. Do you have any okay. favorite methods uh, or when are there too many tiebreakers? All right, this is an interesting one. Um, one of the, the one of my favorite games I own is called Tiebreaker, and it is from Ted Allspatch, which is Bezier Games, and they are the same company that put out Start Player, and it is a similar thing so start player at one time was my most played game of all time because i used to play that before playing every other game and what that is is it's a game to determine who start player is well ted created a game for tiebreakers and it's a silly party game really to be honest uh there's a giant orange meeple that says tiebreaker and then there's cards you draw the card and the card will have you do something and then the first player who does the thing has to grab the tiebreaker meeple so kind of like spoons and then whoever ends up with the tiebreaker meeple wins the tie, which I thought was rather cute. And the reason I like this is because sometimes I hate the tiebreakers that are in actual games. There, there is a propensity in modern gaming for these cute tiebreakers. And in a way, I read them in the rules and I think they're cute and they're amusing, but I hate them when I go to play. Like, for example, the tiebreaker in Arboretum is go plant a tree and come back in 10 years and see whose tree grew the most. I'm like, come on. Uh, like, I'm going to use that in a board game blitz tournament. 
Like that that's what bugs me, right? Because most games are an actual competition. People do care about winning and losing, despite like some people take it more seriously than others. And for a whole conversation on that, check out our podcast episode about competition at the table, episode number X, which we'll throw in the show notes. I have no idea what actual number it is. I remember Brian Kurtz asked the question. But because of that, I I, I want a tiebreaker. I not only want a tiebreaker, I want a second, third, fourth tie. Like, I don't want the player with the most money. Well, what if we have the same money? Then I want then the number of tiles. Okay, what if we have the same money and the same tile? Like, like break it down. I want it probably, on average, three levels, at least, of tiebreaker. Mainly because I play with some people that are that competitive. I run board game tournaments, so I want games. Like, by having a bad tiebreaker, I can't put a game in the board game blitz without throwing in my own tiebreaker, which we have rules for that in the board game blitz and it, of all things it's rock paper scissors but you are welcome to use rock paper scissors instead of the tiebreaker that comes in the box so that's fine um you have anything on this um well for, uh, ryan just started are you okay with a shared victory so what what happens is uh, and unfortunately you can't have an unlimited number of tiebreakers right at some point it really is just a tie. Uh, we see that on Board Game uh, Arena every once in a while. There's a couple of games where, yeah, there's the tiebreaker for number of coins, and there's the tiebreaker for this, but there aren't a dozen different uh, yeah. ways of doing it. At some point, you just have to say, sorry, you're both tied, unless it's a tournament, and then you can have yeah. additional versions. But, uh, you know, I, what about uh, what about shared victories? I again, I'm not a fan. I I like to have winners or losers. The only time I want to share victory is if it's a team game, right? If I'm playing Battlestar Galactica, the human team wins or the Cylon team wins. That that's when we can have a shared victory. Is is all the humans win or all the Cylons win? I don't want a game where we play Terraforming Mars and we have whatever the, the all we were the same Terraforming rating, the same uh, ending mega credits, and the same number of projects in our hand. And we're like, hey, we Terraformed Mars. I'm like, now I feel like I wasted three and a half hours <laughs> of playing the game because we didn't find out who won. Yeah, the, it, it's definitely a bigger problem on some of those long games. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna commit four hours to playing a game. It's not fun to yeah. just sort of say, like just "Yay, not. we won together." Well, no, that's not what I wanted. I, I don't even mind losing after four hours, but somebody should win. Exactly. Uh, and actually, you, you bring up a good point there because I don't mind it in Suro. I remember one game of Suro, we had a, I think it was a six-way tie for the end of the game, where all of the things died on the last turn on the last tile, and I thought that was awesome. It was a lot of fun. But Suro is like a 10 to 15-minute game, so that's that's a very different feel than playing a longer, like I said, Terraforming Mars or something like that. All right. Uh, so, uh, and then and Ryan does point out, rightfully, a few people remember to mention the uh the tiebreaker in the uh rules teaching teach. yes um, yes and you okay have just that brings again. us to another topic well similar topic so this goes to the Ludology podcast i think it was jeff engelstein who was talking about it but i'm not positive it might have been gil hova it was someone on the Ludology podcast that pointed out just how important the tiebreaker is for a game which is something as a designer needs to think about because whatever you make the tiebreaker is now better than everything else in the game for that one reason. So in Terraforming Mars, you have your, I don't know, how many different resources are there? So there's your Mega Credits, your Steel, your Titanium, it's five, your, your, your Trees, your Electricity, and your Heat. So six. six. So you have six different oh, resources. Mega credits, right. I will... Yeah, you have six <laughs> different resources in Terraforming Mars. Well, the tiebreaker that uh, Jacob Ferex Elias put in the game is mega credits. By doing that, he just bumped mega credits above all of those other resources when it comes to end game scoring. So if you have a decision point where you're not sure what to get, your best choice is always go with the mega credits. Be just in case you get to that tie, that's going to put you over the top. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely an important portion of the teach. Uh, when when you've got a situation like that, where one resource becomes the the important resource, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're not being competitive, it may not matter. But uh, if you're, if you're in there and you've got those tough decisions to make, knowing which of the resources or which of the game aspects is going to make the difference in the end can really push your decision yeah. in one way or the other. Yeah. And if there's multiple, so if there's three layers, 
you got to realize that each of those things getting bumped up by a minor amount. Yep. So if the second tiebreaker is cards in hand, well, now you're bumping up. You want to get mega credits and also try to keep the cards in your hand. That is not an actual tiebreaker terraformer. <laughs> this is not an instructional yeah, video. You do not you do not want to hold, have, hold cards in your hand yes. in terraforming Mars. Please don't. <laughs> Actually, one of the important things to do in Terraforming Mars is to sell all of your projects before the end of the game because Mega Credits are the tiebreaker. Yeah. But yeah, whatever that second tiebreaker is, it's now bumped up a bit. And whatever that third one is, is bumped up. And for every one you have, you are making that particular commodity worth more in the game, which is important to game balance. All right, well, we actually had a question come in through our Discord channel from uh, VIP Jeff Seuss. How has the pandemic impacted traffic on our various publishing platforms? Oh, it's... <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll start off. I'll talk about our uh, the podcast because I see those numbers most mm -hmm. regularly. Uh, interestingly, it hasn't, but our numbers are way, way up anyway. Uh, we actually hit our 10,000 listen mark a little ways back and we, we announced it on the show. And this is, oddly enough, thanks to Pandora. Uh, Pandora.com. Now... What's really interesting is we actually can't listen to ourselves on Pandora. Uh, we don't, we can't. Uh, Pandora.com is geolocked to America. So they have done something. Uh, we don't know what, but they have yeah. promoted our content in some manner that we cannot learn about. And uh, that's, uh, that's basically what has, has happened and driven our, listens through the roof uh and thankfully the, our numbers have actually stayed elevated yes, since that's... the pandora promotion has there so we are showing up on chartables top 200 podcasts list uh, our yeah. numbers are looking really great but oddly enough it really has nothing to do with the pandemic that we can tell uh it's down to a promotion through pandora who which we appreciate to the great greatly but we don't understand so <laughs> yeah it... In particular, it's our episode about old games. Yeah, it's it's licensed games or old games, old uh, games, it's right? the old games. Yeah, yeah. So so it's it's our episode talking about like what old board games are still worth playing. Somehow, I I don't know, I don't know how Pandora works. Like, is there Pandora podcast where you like put in your podcast preference? And you go, I like the Dice Tower, and they play a Dice Tower episode, and then they play a something. I have no idea. We don't have Pandora. We don't know how to look at it. Uh, other than that, like it does seem to be going up. And this is the, the biggest thing that's important for what we do as content creators is spikes are good. Spikes are, we want to see spikes, but what's more important than spikes is that it stays up. And every time yeah. you hit a spike that you then level up higher, level off higher than you were before. And that's, that's the big thing we hope for is that slow gain, like a huge spike and staying spike to be awesome. But that doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like you learn the product life cycle. You yeah. hit that spike and a ton of people check you out because there's a spike, whatever that happens to be. Something went viral, some tweet went. Mike Mercer liked something we said on Twitter, retweets something we say, and all of a sudden there's a big spike in views, and they check it out, and everything goes really great. And it's great. And then all these people who follow Mercer check us out, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of them stick around. That's the important part, right, is that the, the some of the, of the people stick around. And that's what we like to see. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, what about uh, what about our, our page views on the website? How is... so, so the start of the pandemic was fantastic for us. And again, we had this huge spike. And I think it was just those first two weeks, right, where everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people thought this may only last a couple weeks, that it was like, you're going to stay home for 14 days to flatten the curve and everything will be back to normal. That was being put out there by a lot of people at the time. And we saw a huge spike in those first two weeks for our, our number of page views. And it wasn't one specific post, but it was it was most of the blog. We do have a more popular than, than average post that was doing exceptionally well. And it was great. We saw this huge spike and that was awesome. And then for a while, it dropped but not as low but as this drags on and i think part of it is as summer happens and people are getting outside more and as things are opening up it just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping and i gotta admit we're now lower than we were before the pandemic hit which is not good but we did have a nice spike there was some good page views there and then like i said things have been petering off so we've also been trying to do things to get attention uh like ryan said like the the project to collect all of the, the free games, yes, that is a great service for the community, but it's also trying to get us hits on our webpage. We want people to go to our list. 
there there is a slight ulterior motive to that <laughs> yeah no and uh and and we've actually been talking about this in the background a little bit uh, one of the things that we're looking to sort of push, you know, we are available everywhere. We we talk about this every episode. We're at, we're on all the social medias and all the different places. Uh, and and you know, tabletop bellhop is what we are, where we are, everywhere. But realistically, the best way to get a hold of any of our content is to just go to tabletopbellhop.com. Yes, uh, because that's where it's all posted. That's where it all starts. Uh, whether it's a YouTube view, whether it's a YouTube video a podcast, an article, a sale, any of that stuff that all basically is, is amalgamated right there at mm-hmm. tabletopbellhop.com. Yeah. Now other stuff, YouTube, we're going up, but there's also, there's another thing though, that I think is driving that more. One of the things I started doing was uh, hosting our YouTube videos on board game geek. And again, I can't tell if there's a pandemic bump or if there's just a, I post our videos on Board Game Geek bump. Now, what I have seen on Board Game Geek is more interaction. I don't get a lot of interaction on Board Game Geek because I don't post in a lot of the threads, but we are seeing comments over there. Uh, one of our comments earlier tonight came from that, and one of our questions tonight, um, sorry, one of our comments earlier, one of our feedback comments was actually from a video on Board Game Geek, two of them actually, the artist and there was another one, whatever, forgetting what we did, but Two of the video comments tonight were off Board Game Geek, not from YouTube. So I that has given us a spike on YouTube. Um, Instagram is doing ridiculously well. I am – so Deanna's measurement of a good Instagram post was, say, 50 likes. If you get 50 hearts, you, that's a good post. Like, I, I did a good post. My posts are averaging now 75 to 90 on, on, on average, and many hitting, like, 120, 130. Which still isn't a huge number, but it's up, right? It's almost double the interaction I used to get on YouTube, on Instagram. Part of it is I'm more, I'm now trying to do at least one post a day to Instagram, if not two, on two different accounts. No one cares about my food account here, but on both <laughs> accounts. But I try to share a game pick and a food pick, and then later I'll share another game pick and another food pick. And that one has been great. Like the, uh, the, um, in their, in the Instagram interactions, but great. Now our goal there is to hit 10,000 followers and I'm 7,000 away. Like it's exploded. Like we're not going viral on Instagram. It'd be awesome to hit 10,000, but that's not happening. As for um, subs and so on, they seem to be about steady uh, about, I don't think we're growing any more or any, any faster or slower, but everything's going up. My Twitch follows YouTube fo- subscribes or, you know, we get a couple, couple yeah. a week two, three a week. It's no big spike, no big drop either way. I know that if you're not subscribed on YouTube, I would love to say that we are really trying to hit the 500 yeah. mark by the end of July. That's just kind of our sort of arbitrary goal. Our uh, our July 26th is our uh, anniversary. So we yep. would love to see uh, a 500 uh, subscriber mark at that point uh, as we end up our second year and head into the third year. So... So yeah, if head to youtube.com slash tabletop bellhop, hit up a, hit us with a subscribe. You can turn on notifications if you want to know when we post something. We post almost every day on YouTube. Yep. Monday we've got an unboxing video. Tuesday the full podcast episode comes out. Thursday are any actual plays, though we're gonna supplement that this week with a box uh, boxing, reboxing, uh, <laughs> box insert build. building. Yeah, insert build. Box build, uh, insert uh, we're gonna start calling them the room upgrades but I didn't think of that until after the episode. <laughs> so it's not in the video, but I want to start calling them the room upgrades because we're upgrading the board games. Um, Fridays, our, our review segment from the podcast goes live. Sunday, the Ask the Bellhop segment from the podcast goes live. And then Saturdays, if we record anything else. So if what's missing in there is Gloomhaven actual plays, which we currently can't do due to the pandemic. Right. Those those were the Thursday, the Thursday upgrade. Yeah. Uh, and uh, generally speaking... Three o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time is when our content goes live, except for the podcast. Podcast is always 2 a.m. Eastern time uh, to hit the podcatchers so that when you wake up Tuesday morning, it's there, it's there for you. Yep, exactly. All right. I think that pretty much, I don't know what, what other, I don't think we're on a uh, Pinterest has been going really well. Actually, that's another one. I don't know if people follow us on, on Pinterest, but you can head over to, Pinterest.com, I think it's forward slash tabletop bellhop. It should be. 
So almost everything's been set up there. Now I am way behind on getting content on there. Like I think I'm on episode 33 or something like that. And we're recording episode 93 tonight. So I'm like 60 episodes behind, but what I have put out there seems to be doing rather well. Um, I've, we've got some good positive feedback from other bloggers who love our pins and possibly want me to create pins for them. They're not gamers. So they're not, it's not really our market. It's just people who like, dang, those are good pins. So people like my pins. The only thing I got to stop doing is having them send to Twitter. I think the days I'm uploading them because I tend to do about 14 in a day when I do sit down and work on Pinterest pins. Right. So that one's doing all right. Do we do we have a TikTok account? We do. Oh, okay. I we have a TikTok account. I have not done anything <laughs> with it. Um, supposedly the hottest board game review in the world right now is because they are doing one minute videos on TikTok. And, and getting paid by publishers to do one-minute reviews on TikTok. So. Well, if you can do it, I mean, that is a skill. And you can't you can't just do that off the cuff. You've got to yeah, know what you're doing crap. for a one-minute video. Absolutely. I'll admit I have not checked out this particular person, but there is a lot of buzz about their work. But it's, it's on my list to do. I have TikTok on my phone. I registered for an account. I follow a few of our gem friends because I was like, I don't know what to do with this. So I started searching names of people who I knew used it. Um, one person in particular was like, yeah, I use TikTok whenever I'm feeling down. I just boot it up and I'm like, all right, I don't get it. It's a bunch of people dancing to music or doing stupid things to music. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I, we're, we're not their market. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, 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 not the, we're not really the TikTok market. No. So... Yeah, I, the the NSA, she's too old for TikTok. Uh, at some point, I think we're supposed to record a video for her her side of uh, not the bellhop, but her work. Yeah. Someone wants a TikTok video. So I don't know. I, I looked at it. I can't. I, I haven't even tried to make a video. I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, I'm playing whatever game. Maybe I just do like a flyover with my phone or something. <laughs> I don't know. I, I need to. I, I don't know if I need to. See, this is something else. Here's a, another interesting gaming conversation that's going on in the industry right now is a, I wouldn't say a fight, but a discussion between publishers and content creators on how much social media managing should a content creator do for a publisher. So because the publisher gives me a game and I put out a review, is it now my responsibility to share that on 80 different social media platforms? Or is it the company's social media manager's responsibility to share that on 80 different content providers? And how reasonable is it for a publisher to say to say me, hey, you released a video for the alpha. We need to see that on TikTok when I don't go on TikTok. And the general pushback is that social content creators or so, uh, content creators should stick to the medium they know and, and like, like stick to your field, stick to your, your river, right? Like don't jump wherever. Yeah. But – there should be an expectation that you do share it on whatever platforms you are on. And it should be something that's discussed before the game was given over, which I agree with all that. It's the very much the, you shouldn't spread yourself too thin, like pick what you're good at and stick to it. Yeah. Um, people yeah, I are mean, already seeing again, we're, 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 we're 40 year old white guys. Uh, TikTok is not really our specialty. Now that's not to say that it couldn't be, you know, if yeah. we had, that that vibe uh and, and the, the ability to to do those really concise videos and had that skill set we could um not not saying that a 40 year old guy can't make a great tiktok video yeah. but the really the really tight beat you know on the beat content style isn't what we do yeah. uh and so and is it worth learning probably not that which yeah. is more where i was going <laughs> yeah is 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 that a skill set that would actually help us out right yeah, and and and, and Ryan, Ryan points the tarot. Time to start grooming the children for it because they, they are yeah. they they, they some of them old. do have that. Uh, you know, they, they are growing up in that form of media. Yes. Uh, for me, I mean, I don't even do Instagram. I, I can't. I was a photographer, and I I yeah. have some issues with Instagram. I have some issues with Pinterest. Uh, and and I just chose not to go in that direction personally. So. All right. Let's go on to at least one more question. How what are we how are we looking for time? Oh, uh, we're good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, you know, we're we're probably coming up at about that one more question All time. Right. What do we got? Let's see if we get one or two more. All Last right. Year, if we get a really good one in the chat, we'll do it. Sure. Uh so All right. So I got one for you, Sean, instead. 
All right. This comes from patron of the show, Roger, Roger Malosh. We all know and love Roger. Uh, he has started tinkering with Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator. He wants to know, which between us, really, what's your preferred choice of the two? Now, the thing is, I'm not on both. So, first off, he wants to know which one, in your opinion, would be the best choice for a game designer to play test and promote their games. Now, Tabletop Simulator... I downloaded, I played around with for a bit. I technically have it, but I didn't try it out much. Tabletopia, until very recently, I couldn't use on my computer. There, It ends up there was a, a Chrome plugin interfering, but I didn't know that. Um, now that that's fixed, I could technically play with it, but for a long time there, I couldn't even get it to load. So I couldn't check it out. So Roger's wondering, Roger is a local game designer. He started converting his games into 3D medium and into digital space and is wondering which of the two uh, are better to you, because I know you've used both. Yeah, no, I, and I have, and uh, I actually, I glanced at Discord right now, and Roger seems to have chosen Tabletop Simulator because he's using it right now. <laughs> but uh, uh, for, for me, I think there's actually two separate things here, unfortunately, and this is actually a problem that I see with, with this uh, right now. Because uh, right now you've got the, the two big ones, I think, are Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator. There aren't really too many other options out there right now. But right now, I think for the designer to work in, to design and have the most flexibility for their game, I think Tabletop Simulator is probably the best choice. Uh, unfortunately, I think Tabletopia is probably better to market and promote in I think it has a little bit more polish to it and is going to be a little more user friendly. Now, if you are someone who hangs out on board game geek, you're probably not going to care. You're going to be comfortable either way, but for the average public who's used to a little more polish and shine on the interface, they're going to be more likely to drift towards tabletopia because it's, it just feels more finished. Uh, one of the things I noticed about Tabletop Simulator, the first time I grabbed it, was it felt old. Uh, mm. it, it's under constant upgrade. It's, it's very, it is fresh. Uh, it is new. They are, they are keeping it updated, but it has a very dated feel to the interface. Uh, and that's something that I think may put off some people who you may be aiming for your game. Now, if your game is for the, the gaming, uh, you know, the hobby gamers, the people who hang out on Board Game Geek, then I think Tabletop Simulator is probably your go-to choice, hands down. Most people already have it, I think, is, is, is what's going to happen there. So, so, uh, so one of the questions, though, is does Tabletop Simulator doesn't have a web version, right? Like no. Tabletopia, anyone can get on, whereas Tabletop Simulator, you've got to install Steam, you've got to download Tabletop Simulator, you've got to install it. Then you also have to download the mod pack for whatever game you want to play. Whereas Tabletopia just feels like going to board game arena, but it's 3D. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, that's 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 really the whole thing is you you've got uh, that that polish and that interface is right there for you. Uh, you know, you it's hard to beat. <laughs> it's um, it's hard to beat that uh, that interface and that uh, proximity to your clients. Basically, is is is, is when you're you're not separated by the uh, the interface. Of, of tabletop simulator the purchase of tabletop simulator mm -hmm. uh whereas you know you know it's tabletopia you, it's right there you go to the website you click on the game and you go to, and you're good to go all right now do you know if can you play designer games on tabletopia with a free account uh, or do I, you need a paid account to be able to like say play rogers prototype I, I believe that may be up to the designer i am not oh that'd be cool uh a hundred percent sure and i'm and i'm I'm hesitant to go to tabletopia right now because yeah. it is a bit of a uh, resource drain so um, i said it wouldn't even run on my system yeah first. so let's I, i'm not going to risk that right now and unfortunately i didn't have that one that 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 bit uh ready to go fair but, enough fair enough um, like I, said, I know yeah. roger's been trying both of them yeah um I, so I, as I, as someone who's going to play games, you'd recommend as yourself as as a gamer who's played games on both. Which would you rather play games on? Uh, I think I prefer Tabletop Simulator. It seems yeah. to be the more powerful engine. 
it's not limited by the web. Again, mm -hmm. one of the problem, you know, the, the benefit of Tabletopia is you go to the web and it's right there, but that's also a limitation, right? You don't have quite as much power because you are stuck with what you can do in someone's web browser. Uh, and as we sure. saw, you, you know, you couldn't even load yeah. it up for quite a while. Uh, and quite that's going to drive people away. Whereas if you download the game, if you can, you know, your, your, if you can download the game and play it on Steam and, and from Steam, uh, and you, you fit all the, whatever the minimum requirements are, mm -hmm. you're going to be good to go, uh, with whatever someone can put into it. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, Tabletopia, I, I will give them a thumbs up for their customer support once once I actually took the time to com not complain about it, but look into it. Uh, just Googling it didn't work. I got a hold of someone on Twitter, and they got in a live chat with me and walked through it. It actually went really well. It was it was a good way to good way to get it set up and it was all like i said it was a matter of chrome settings it was it was background settings and of course the way i found out it was chrome settings is is the evil person made me download edge but except for the fact that i had to download edge it went really well right yeah no and unfortunately you know it, that's something uh, that's a real problem and now thankfully they have a support team that's able to go through yeah. that but the average user isn't going to go to that level and even reach yeah. out to support they're going to go to that website if it fails, and they're going to go away and they're going to go get something else that yeah. someone else said worked, which is probably Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, I just, it, I wish Tabletop Simulator was free. The way, the fact they're charging for games makes me feel the platform should be free, but... Well, now, to be, fair, to be fair, not to all the money. games are, you don't have to pay for all the games. Uh, there is a number of the higher end content, uh, you know, your, your premium games like Wingspan, uh, which... Yeah. They are, you know, you have to pay, buy Wingspan because it's still new hot, new hotness in the game stores. Yep. Uh, people, Fair. people are having trouble getting that. But if you want to download um, Dino Island, uh, it's there. It's there. Um, you know, I have a copy of it. We could play it right now. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Tabletopia, a lot of the the popular games are behind a paywall. Yeah. When I went there, I and the ones that were free were not the easiest to use. So, so my limited experience with Tabletopia was I booted up Azul, and I played it long enough to realize I was going to have to draw one tile out at a time and place them on the market myself. And I'm like, nope, I am not drawing the whatever yeah. five to well, twenty <laughs> tiles required to yeah. start a round of Azul. I'm well, like, and nope. unfortunately, that's actually a limitation of a lot of these games. Uh, you know, again, it is. These games are there to represent the tabletop, simu you know, the simulation of the tabletop. So if you need to draw things, it's in many cases going to make you draw them. Now, the author can go ahead and put in macros and speed up some of that stuff. But that's totally up to the, you know, the author of that implementation to do. Otherwise, you are going to have to draw all the cards, draw all the cubes, roll all the dice, whichever. Uh, and that's one of the, you know, the, the problems of a tabletop simulator is it's a simulation. Yeah, even if it let me draw four at a time, I wouldn't have mattered as much because you always draw four. Because, yes, in real life, I have to draw tiles. Of the oh, and there goes the Mo. We, uh, we, we lost the Mo briefly. He should be right back. And... Uh, and here's the Mo back again. Wow. Okay. Uh, so it is. I didn't just even know been... there was a problem until all of a sudden Skype closed. Yeah. No. It, it it was an all of a sudden problem. It did not. It did did not. Hey, I'm actually on. huge. Like we have good quality now. Uh, ish. Um, I'm not all sure. I've lost. I've lost track of what the right size yeah, is who knows anymore. What the right size um, is. But uh, okay. So we got one more question that came in from the chat room, and uh, <laughs> then we're gonna wrap it up. And uh, just like to say hi to Sean P. Kelly in our chat room. Another hey, Sean. Sean. And you know what? We had a, a an over density of Sean's that caused the problem. That's you know, we've talked oh, about this before. Weird Sean morning density, star's not here. If weird morning true. star joins in, then that's then. true. All right, we're we're still we're without, still only at two Sean's. Sean Hamilton to join <laughs> Sean from Hamilton. Yeah, we're, and, we're still... and Sean from Madison, I think it is. Yep, yep. I might be wrong on that. Uh so yeah, we're not we're Madison. only at we're only at two, not three Sean's, so we, we yes. haven't uh, we haven't two hit the maximum. All right, so last question. Last question of the episode uh, is, uh, and this one comes from Anshi Games, uh, as I sort of resize you yet again. Uh, <laughs> what is the number one game you'd like to see go digital? Huh. I should think about this. 
If you got an answer, go ahead. Because gotta... uh, you know what, it's it's tough. There's so many games that I mean, right now, I think if you have, you know, in the last week or so, Pulsar uh, is the one. Twenty eight forty nine. Yeah. Pulsar twenty eight forty nine. I would love to be able to play with you guys right now. Yep. Uh, and you know, otherwise, I'd be able to you know swing down to Windsor and 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 get a game in. But seeing as how that's not an option. I'd love to find a, a copy of Pulsar Digital. Interestingly enough, today, uh, on the topic of di digital games, Codenames just went digital. Oh, they, uh, that was new. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that was new. Codenames.games is now the, uh, okay. the the site to go to, so you can play for all your digital codenames. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That game should work great. Like, you know what? The, one of the problems in person is you can read people, and you're not supposed to do that in Codenames. Right. Like, it's not meant to be social deduction. That is part of it. It's like, oh, I saw you looking over there. Like, that's definitely part of the game, but it shouldn't be. So it should actually play better digital. Yeah. The other one is Blood Rage. The Blood Rage digital just went live today. And I know a lot of people love Blood Rage. That is not going to be my choice. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't like playing digital games as much as playing in person. So wasn't there another one where we were talking about playing with John or was it Pulsar? I thought there was something else in the last little while. We were like, to, uh, we were sitting there thinking, I wish there was a digital uh, version. We yeah, I know. There's, 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 I'm sure there's other ones. something this week, like in the last week. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, there's, I, I, I'm playing so many games on Game Arena. It's <laughs> yeah. hard to, it's hard to think of what else I would want to play, but there's definitely, there's, there's always more games. Oh, em the Eminent Domain expansions. Yes, we don't have the, the expansions. We, for we have domain. the base game. So, so one yep. of, this is a pile of obligation problem. I need to review Eminent Domain Exotica. I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm done. I have final thoughts on Eminent Domain Exotica, but I have never played Eminent Domain Exotica with more than two people, and I've never played Eminent Domain Exotica with um, Escalation with more than two people. Now, the first one, I can tell how it'll play with more people. I played enough games. We played enough eminent domain. I don't need to play that with more people, but the escalation part, I really can't tell. Like there were some issues that came up playing two player that may be solved playing more. And I have no clue. And I have no way to test that until we're allowed to gather with more than five people and with more than one family. Um, Cause that is not a game I am going to teach my oldest daughter. It's just not something she's going to be interested in. And it's, there's a lot of other stuff I'd rather teach her first if I'm going to deep dive her into heavier games. So that's one of the problems. Uh, but I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I guess Pulsar would be nice. Um, I remember for a long time I wanted Eclipse, and I guess the Eclipse has been pulled. I think Twilight Imperium. Twilight Imperium, whatever, 3rd edition, 4th edition, a really good implementation of that I think I would really like, especially if you could do turn-based play with like the full – I think it goes up to eight players with all the expansions – because that game takes so long to play normally, and there are so many tech trees and cards to keep track of, and I am certain every time we play Twilight Imperium, someone's cheated in some way inadvertently, the, the, an unintentional cheating. Someone's played Extreme without realizing it, because there's just so much going on. There's counters moving around and having to spend things and put things on the map and remove things, and I'm sure someone has moved a ship through a spot that already had a control marker and stuff like that. Whereas a computer would take care of all that. You wouldn't have to have to worry about your control markers and how much power you have left and which text you've unlocked. And you forget your text. You're like, oh, you're rolling, and then three things later, you're like, oh, wait, I have orbital bombardment. I should have rolled another die. So there, I think I think Twilight Imperium, I'll say 4th edition. Uh, it could have been 3rd, but 4th edition being the newest. I would love a like a good, like I want it to feel like a board game. I don't want them to, to spruce it up and change it. I just right. want that experience digitized with everything, the math done for us. Yeah, now unfortunately, I don't know TI. I have to say, I've been playing Stellaris lately, which is, again, which is 4X yeah, uh, in the extreme, the but I think it's probably uh, a lot more uh glammed up than 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 just the the ti experience so oh there you go there's a mod pack for tabletop simulator unofficial. well yeah and unfortunately most of the mod packs for t for tabletop simulator yeah. are unofficial um that's a that's a pretty uh, uh, of of dubious uh legality too i'm sure yeah there's some copyright uh, ish issues with the uh the cards and things that get put up on tabletop simulator and you know you'll you'll notice when you download a lot of tabletop simulator packs that the uh, the link for the materials goes to Google Drive <laughs> a lot. Yeah, yeah. 
So I do want to uh, shout out, uh, thanks to Sean in the chat, giving us some suggestions other than the Skype. It's all stuff. Like I said, in the next week, we, we may be back here next week without Skype. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, we, we do have a now, I do now have a solution that uh, if I move everything away from one OBS to a different OBS that can, can help deal with the Skype problem, but uh, avoiding the Skype problem completely may not be the worst yeah. solution that as is. well as going to. Yeah. That might be a better option. That yeah. is for sure. All right. Well, uh, we are not going to jump into the lobby because, well, we've just been in the lobby for the yes. entire time. Uh, where is that? That's right. So that's it for this month's AMA. Remember, you can find lots of gaming topics and advice like this over at the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on gaming advice at the top of the page. Uh, finally, if you've got a game or game night question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or email me directly, questions at tabletopbellhop.com.